my favorite part of the show where we all look down at our phones to figure out if we're live or not. Hey! Are we live? It looks like we're live! Hey! Welcome. Hi, everybody! Welcome to this Giga Rambles! Welcome to another edition of Giga Rambles. An Age of Sigmar themed edition. Yeah! Ooh. Both of our wheelhouses. Oh man, this is... All my wheels are pretty much in this house. To yeah! Be honest. I have a few wheels in the other ones, but this, this is the monster truck of wheels for me. So, yeah. so I'm going to let John talk most of the time, and I'm just going to sit here and cry. Okay. Um, <laughs> so this weekend sees the release of Broken Realms Techless, uh, which is the next part of the Broken Realms series. Uh, for those who are not knowledgeable in it, uh, basically Broken Realms is a huge narrative campaign that's going to span across the entire Age of Sigmar setting, involving all the factions in one way or the other, and probably culminating in something big. Absolutely culminating in something big. If this book is anything to uh, <laughs> say about it, so no spoilers. Yeah. But every one of these books has drastically changed the storyline of Age of Sigmar, I think. Absolutely. This is not, this falls in that trend very much. Yeah, and so so with it, um, it's something that Games Workshop doesn't necessarily do a whole lot or is not known for, but they are willing to put characters down, um, change alliances or allegiances, excuse me. Um, in, in major ways, uh, it, it's a very active story with a lot of things changing, and like we said, it looks it's all pointing towards building something up, uh, something big, which we'll hopefully find out sometime in the summer. Um, but until then, the Broken Realms Techlist book um, that's releasing tomorrow, uh, much like Techlist himself, I'm going to awkwardly balance it. On the yeah. Uh, this is also, it sees the release of the second part of the Lumina. Yes. So uh, the Luminef launched, what, uh, August 2020, and we had a great wave of models from it, but now with Broken Realms Techlist, there's a second Luminef battle tome coming out with basically an, almost another full wave of an army coming with it. It really is. There's there's War Scrolls in here. Uh, I feel like I'm doing a reading rainbow. Yeah. Follow along at home. There's War Scrolls, War Scrolls in here for all the new models, and I guess we should explain if you are a Luminef player, and you don't care about the storyline, you can just get the new Lumineth uh, Battle Tome, which has yeah. all the Lumineth units in it. Welcome to being a Stormcast player. Now you have a Bible that you have to carry around. That's right. Listed. If you want the story and you have some Lumineth cards or whatever you want to play, this also has all the new Lumineth models, but not the old ones. Yep. Uh, but it does have all the story, the battle plans, the new battalions for the boxes that you can kind of see below. They're a little, yeah, they're catching the light a little bit weird, but the four, uh, same way they did the last one, the four battle force. Yeah. What boxes? What is it oh, just Broken Realm boxes. Yeah, so for those wondering, uh, Broken Realms is actually a great time to hear uh, car beeping. Car alarm. It's a beat you can dance to. Oh, okay, cool. There, there it goes. Um, Broken Realms is a great time to get into Age of Sigmar if you're interested. Uh, basically, with all this new information, uh, basically every faction feels fresh. Uh, there's a lot of excitement around the game. There's always games going on, uh, especially uh, here with Gigabytes, either in-store uh, safely or through our Discord. Uh, we use Tabletop Simulator and all that sort of fun stuff. Um, but it is a fantastic time to try it out. Uh, so if you were looking for a fantasy-themed war game, uh, I definitely recommend Age of Sigmar. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, but the cool thing about this is a lot of the older armies, like some of my uh, my favorites here, Mr. Mr. Nurgle, Nurgle there, um, they're getting a little bit of a touch-up in all these Broken Realms yep. books. It's um, They did a similar thing with 40k, uh, where they had every army kind of got a little thing extra, some new War Scrolls, uh, new battalions. And that's the way these books are. These books and these boxes are, uh, they work the same. Um, the boxes are the battalion that you can run in the book. Yep. So if you see it and you're like, oh, that's really cool. You don't have to worry about trying to piece it together. Here it is. This is exactly what the battalion is for the Staliarch Lords, etc. Um, they're very, very reasonably priced, considering yeah. the amount of stuff you get in them, especially if you like some of these uh, models, like, once again, the Staliarch Lords. They're kind of expensive, but really cool. It's a great way to start building an army if you don't want to do the start collecting box uh, yeah. as well, because there's no, with maybe the exception of this far one, there's no way that any of these aren't good starting points in the armies. Yeah. This one's just a little... The one, the one on the far side here uh, is definitely a collector's box, but it's a little weird book I'm talking over, uh, but still really cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, basically all of them are a great way to get started with it or to fill out an army um, that you already have. Mm -hmm. um, especially like looking at something like Cities of Sigmar, it's basically two, uh, what are they called? 
the Huracanums. Either the yes. Celestial Huracanum or the Luminarch of Heish. Yes. So one of those Nerd. two ones <laughs> um, to add to your forces, or you know, just start an army yourself. Yeah. Or if you just want the best one, which is this one right here. Yeah. Obviously, this is, there's no comparison between this one because it comes with you got your Sloppity Bob Piper and your Spoil Pox Scrivener and a whole bunch of Plague Bearers. I really like Nerd. Yeah. So that's why. The, yeah, and so they're, they're all great points to get into a faction with. Uh, I really recommend it. We do have some of these still available for pre-order. Uh, they all release tomorrow with the official release date, uh, which is super fun. Uh, and Zach, you're going to be doing a podcast going over the actual story of Broken Realms Techless. Right? I am. Uh, I'm going to plug myself here, so check out AtlantaWarhammer.com, uh, sponsored by Gigabytes. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be doing a podcast. We're going to go through this book. Uh, it'll be out probably Tuesday. Maybe Wednesday depends on how long it takes to edit, uh, and we will be doing all the spoilers and uh, all the all the whining and complaining I can possibly manage about this book uh, in one place. So, but if you're just a fan of the story in general, uh, even if you don't have any dogs in this fight, uh, it is a really cool. Story. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Even even if I came where I going Games Workshop, uh, I still really enjoyed it. There's no dinosaurs in that book, but I still really like the story in it. Um, That's a very high praise for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, so, like I was saying before, like they really kind of pushed the story forward, and they did a lot of things in it that I wasn't expecting um, to do that, right? Like, things are getting yeah. changed up, things are, the story's moving forward, um, whether you like it or not, um, which is really great. It's no longer 12 minutes to midnight um, eternally in these settings, right? right. Uh, so, I definitely recommend uh, either listening to the story podcast or picking up the book itself and or both. reading through. Yeah, or book. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. yeah. Both. Follow I, along. You, with you, it. Can, you can read along with us um, and, and get your own, form your own opinions instead yeah. of just having us tell you ours forcibly. Right. Which is yeah. What I'm gonna be doing here, so. yeah. And so all of this will lead to the next Broken Realms book, which is uh, Bellacor, uh, which should be out sometime in the near future, probably May. Yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll keep you guys updated. You'll know. Yeah. Because I'm excited about that one as well. It's nothing I'm not excited about. Yeah. It's, no, it's all great, um, absolutely great, great um, storytelling, and it's kind of exciting to see where things are going to go, and they're introducing a new character named Kragnos at the end of it, yes. with Broken Realms Kragnos, so everyone's kind of trying to figure out who he is and what he represents, so, yeah. Yeah, tinfoil hats on. Uh, I think it's going to be, people have rumored that it's going to be AOS 3.0, yeah. that will be kind of the launch of it, which uh, there's... Don't believe anything you read. Everybody has written, this is what's going to happen in 3.0, and they're yeah. all different. So nobody knows. Yeah. Uh, there's, some, you know, there's some theories about stuff that may or may not happen that sound realistic, but that'll probably be what causes, what is that cataclysm that moves it forward uh, and fixes some parts of the game that probably need to be fixed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'm, cool. ex I'm excited for it. Yeah, so come, come, come get these boxes. And uh, we should talk about the League a little bit. Yes, like yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, Zach, what's the League? Oh, <laughs> why, thanks for asking. Uh, nice serve and tea. Yeah. Um, so if you've got these boxes and you're wanting to play some Age of Sigmar, now that we're able to start getting together safely uh, in, in little more groups and everything, uh, we're starting another league. This is season three, I think. Um, it's called the Age of Heroes, and because it uses in the General's Handbook uh, 2020, there's the Anvil of Apotheosis, where yep. you can make your own custom character. Um, so we did a big survey. A lot of you answered. Thank you. A lot of you answered. Uh, and gave opinions, and it's funny because almost all of them were kind of the same answer, so it was pretty easy to determine how you all wanted to do this league. Uh, it starts, I think you can actually go ahead and head to gigabytesonline.com and buy a ticket right now. Yep. Um, when you do buy it, just to make sure you go to the other page and fill out the form, because we need that for recording, so you can get prizes and scores and that kind of thing. Um, it's sort of a ladder league, sort of a takeover territories kind of thing. Uh, it's mostly an excuse to just get out and play again. Absolutely. Um, and any of these would be a great way to start a uh, faction. Uh, it's going to be commit to one faction for the league. So we'll get some really cool like stories, hopefully, of yeah, people taking their champions. Um, and if you're you're way more on the competitive side and you don't want to worry about the anvil of apotheosis or any of the custom stuff, there's still plenty of the GW-approved things to use, and you can use those. They score the same. So you can play it however you want to. Um, there's a whole handbook and everything. So like I said, gigabytesonline.com. Uh, go in there and buy it, or you can go up to the store and buy it as well. And we officially start recording on the fourth for points. So yeah. start catching up. I have one. I probably have two by the end of the day. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Double so my usual score. It is happening very soon. Uh, we're getting started very soon. Yes. Uh, so yeah, please, please take part. Uh, we'll be pushing that a lot. Um, I'll definitely be posting up 
the, the links on our um, Discord and our Facebook page for North Georgia Age of Sigmar. Uh, Zach has put a lot of effort into it. All of his graphic design knowledge has gone into <laughs> the pamphlets and all that. It looks really, really slick. So uh, definitely something to check out. Even if you are mildly thinking about playing Age of Sigmar, uh, just take a look at it. Take a, take a look at all the effort that our community puts into building itself and you know keeping things positive and going. So, yeah, yeah. We, we've had, I think, every Thursday now I've met someone new who has come out of the woodwork to uh, start playing. Yeah. So definitely, if you're new, don't worry about not being fully experienced or anything. Uh, come out and, and play. And there's people that will teach you. I'll do a teaching game gladly. You can beat up my Stormcast all day, every day, and yeah. feel good about it. Um, so yeah, come out and play. There's lots of new people. There's lots of pros. Whatever level you want to game at, uh, whether it be highly narrative, just for fun, or you want to really get your teeth kicked in so you can learn how to do that, someone up here is at that level. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Uh, 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 Trey is saying that the volume's low and that the uh, logo is blocking one of the products, but oh. I don't think. We'll have to be loud. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, oh, I can hear it fine. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. Good. We'll do so, a little bit of volume right there. See if right. that helps. It's also because we're wearing masks because we're being safe. Right. Uh, and you think you're talking louder than you are in a mask because we just we're trying not to sound like Bane the whole time. Right. You know? God. Numerous re re recordings to get Bane to sound like that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> speaking of being my safe, uh, my tech list now. Uh, so we did want to talk a little bit about moving forward at Gigabytes. Uh, vaccines are available for the general public of Georgia. Uh, so if you want to get a vaccine, and I can recommend it to anyone, uh, please go get yourself vaccinated. Uh, it really just takes some time to apply at different websites and find a site that's open, um, please get vaccinated. Uh, that, that's basically my stance on it, um, just so we can move forward and get some more in-person gaming. Uh, but with that, we're hopefully in June, um, with vaccinations being out for three months. Keep talking about fixing the volume. Yeah. Uh, with vaccinations being out for three months, we can start running more events with a larger capacity to it. Um, I know a lot of people are excited about that, and we are s testing things out with the 40K RTT. And with the RTT, we're just opening up for more spaces, and hopefully more people will be able to come in and participate. Um, as long as everything is still trending the way it is in terms of people getting vaccinated and being safe and all that sort of stuff. We will keep an eye on all the data. Um, that's usually my job. I and very fastidious with making sure that we uh, keep track of everything, data included. Um, so just keep an eye on our website. We'll have updates. Uh, we just posted one last night about the RTT. So if you're a 40K player interested in coming into more tournaments, uh, please check that out. And yeah, uh, stay safe, everyone. And we'll do our best to uh, you know, make sure you all stay safe. Yeah, provide a safe place to play games. Exactly. And um, I miss playing games. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, with that, we are still expected to enforce masks for the foreseeable future. We don't have a proposed end date because everything's still up in the air. Um, and we still will encourage social distance, especially if y'all are from different households or different uh, social circles. Uh, since me and Zach work together, we can get a little closer uh, since we see each other on a day-to-day -day basis. We've also had a bunch of vaccine shots already. Oh, so yeah, yeah. We're, we're yeah. semi-safe. <laughs> We're safer, but yeah, definitely keep the masks on, keep it safe. We're almost out of this, guys. Yeah. The light is at the end of the tunnel. Exactly. And so so hopefully, you know, mid-summer or so, we can definitely uh, move on to a better and more populous game. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, well, let's move on to other releases for this weekend. It's going to knock over all of Props. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, so releasing today, the second is Galaxy's Most Wanted. It's a, a whole expansion box for Marvel Champions. Uh, so if you are a fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy, this is the way to get started. Uh, basically, it includes uh, majority of the Guardians, except for Star-Lord, uh, with plenty of the villains. Who needs him anyway? It's his fault. <laughs> yeah, well, so it's like Rocket and, Rocket and Groot are a pair together. Uh, then there's Drax and Gamora, I believe, in there. And so, Star Lord's coming out separately. I believe he should be dropping in May if it's not pushed back due to a blockage in the canal somewhere. 
Um, <laughs> Uh, but the box itself is a lot of fun. Not only does it have the new characters in it, but it also has a lot of uh, new villains and challenges to go through. Uh, one of our uh, employees, Matt, has been playing through it um, to get a feel for it so we can start talking a little bit more about uh, the games and such. But what I've heard altogether is it is a phenomenal expansion, even if you're not necessarily interested in the Guardians of the Galaxies. Just the new villains they add. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and I think we're actually going to start trying to do some streams of the games. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I might be setting myself up for failure by announcing it and having to do it. Um, well, hey. But we're going to try to hopefully start streaming out of this box, running like a little campaign out of it. Yeah. Uh, so you all can watch along at home, and what it, I, I want to join. I mean, I already bought Ant-Man, and I've never played the game. Right. So I'm excited to just play as Ant-Man. Yeah, so for those who don't know, uh, Marvel Champions is a living card game done by Fantasy Flight, uh, where... It is a cooperative game, which is a lot of fun. Uh, so basically, it can play for one, I think up to, uh, what, four or five players at a time. And each player then takes the role of a hero with their own deck. So you can play as Ant-Man, Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, Thor, all the Avengers, plus even more. Uh, so the game itself is a lot of fun because it gives you all the card game like deck building that... Uh, you would like to have in it without the collectible aspect that you get in a game like, let's say, like Magic or Pokemon, right. where you're having to like fish for those rares or, you know, pull enough of one card to finally build your deck. Um, you don't have to buy a booster box to try to get the one card you need to yeah. stay competitive with the type of deck because they're all self-contained. Yeah, and so it's great for people who love board games and also love card games, and it's a great way to kind of like merge those groups together. So if you have a board game group but you'd like to introduce them to more card games, or a card game group that you want to introduce to more board games. It's a great crossover product, um, and I can tell you it's a lot of fun, and Fantasy Flight has put in a lot of effort and love, especially into designing all these characters. Yeah, plus it's Marvel. Who doesn't like Rocket Raccoon? Yeah. And if you don't, then I don't know what to say. Yeah. And uh, once again, another uh, shameless website plug, but if you go to Gigabytes online, we keep all the pre-orders uh, up to date on uh, Marvel Champions, so it's a great way to see what's coming out or what we already have in stock, so you can pick up uh, all the products pretty easily. Yeah. And I guess one last thing we should mention is we're kicking in. It's a new month. Yes. Um, new food specials. New food specials. Uh, they are, I don't know what they are, because I can't remember them. So, they're delicious. Uh, they are delicious. We've had for sales. So uh, the theme this month is definitely centered around uh, gardens, bees, and honey. Uh, so a lot of our food specials are going to involve honey in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we uh, are continuing our boba tea this month. So it's got uh, the winter melon uh, green tea with the uh, popping pearls in it, uh, which is absolutely phenomenal if you haven't tried it yet. Uh, but we're also having, uh, in a new uh, thing for this month, we're partnering with the Australian Bakery on Marietta Square. We're using a lot of their bread products, products in our specials this month. So uh, definitely come check it out. There's a whole, whole bunch. Uh, I just ate one of their chocolate hot cross buns uh, right before stream, and it is delicious. <laughs> and you're going into a food coma right now. Yeah, oh, uh, I'm, I'm going to take a nap um, right after this show gets <laughs> uh, out. Um, but yeah, so definitely check out uh, our food specials. Uh, we'll be posting a little menu on our website uh, and um, Facebook uh, probably right after the stream uh, just to get everyone a chance to see what we're doing for the month. Um, yeah, it's really exciting. Uh, what we've been able to do with our specials, and we're super happy to start partnering with other local businesses to help cross promote. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I will. Oh yeah, Emily. There's Australian Bakery here at Gigabytes. So I guess I'll see you around lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, your comments are coming in a little bit behind. That's why we're having to look yeah. down and uh, and check them out. Marvel is going to be united. I don't know what that means. Oh. Oh. So he's talking about the Marvel United. Um, board game. Oh, okay. So, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, so Marvel United is a... It's a pool mini or not game, and it's kind of hard to describe right off the, the, the get-go. Um, and it involves uh, deck building, like... Um, or sorry, it involves a deck for each hero, similar to Marvel Champions, but there's also uh, miniatures involved in it, too, and a global board where you're, you're sending your heroes to different zones to deal with different threats. Uh, we have the base game here, and then we have the Kickstarter add-ons Coming sometime in the near future. Um, we haven't gotten an exact shipping date from Cool Mini or not yet, um, but we're really excited for it. Um, I even picked it up; like I got the full pledge. The minis are adorable. Uh, it's all like chibi Marvel I, characters. Yeah, I've seen this. yeah. 
Um, and so uh, we have a lot of people picking it up. Uh, for those who don't know, we do have the Kickstarter version, I believe, still available on our website. So check out Gigabytes Online, uh, Marvel United, for all the updates there. Uh, so if you buy the base game right now, we basically ship it to you, and then whenever the Kickstarter extras come in, we ship that to you free of cost as soon as they're available. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you sold me. Yeah. Oh, um, so... Yes. Jeremy, the answer is yes. There is a new City of Sigmar that lets you play uh, instead of the Stormcast 1 and 4 trick that you can do. You can now bring a Lumineth unit as yep. your 1 and 4. Uh, and this this bizarre but lovable box here... Yeah. Uh, it's a great start. Plays, it plays very heavily into the story as well. Like, way more than I thought a uh, Luminar would so, play. So could Jeremy play Cities of Sigmar and bring in a Fox Spirit? Uh, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you absolutely can. Yeah. Uh, the Fox Spirits are, are real cool and real powerful. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you could do that with Cities. So you can actually ally some in and bring them in as Cities units to help get that kind of synergy. Right. Uh, I haven't had a ton of chance to dive into the rules and everything. We'll be doing that on the podcast. But I know it's possible. Yeah, so uh, for people that like some of the Lumina figures, but overall are more of an old school Warhammer player, mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely great to play Cities of Sigmar um, since you can kind of mix and match with those forces. So, yeah. yeah. You basically can put some High Elves with some Lumina and uh, some Hand Gunners or maybe a Dwarven Gyrocopter, all that fun stuff. You can have a ridiculous army. And, uh, yeah, it's called Settler's Game. Yeah. Uh, it's. Brand new Cities of Sigmar thing. This is reversed. I can't figure out where to van a white this. But, uh, yeah. You can do it. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and, Jeremy, I'll put you on the list for uh, a Fox Spirit as soon as we get more in. Um, just because quantities were super limited, uh, we uh, got allocated hard. Um, we're hoping allocation eases up as the summer gets closer, but we'll keep everyone to know. But we are getting a second wave of Lumineth in, um, hopefully within a week or two. And that's when you should be able to like, get your Fox Spirit journey. And then if other people want to pick up more models for Lumina, that's when we should have them available. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. They're on the way. Absolutely. Uh, you know, barring any boating accidents. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I still then, think the next guy in the next boat through just jackknifes it, gets off, takes his hat off, and just walks away. He's like, my job here is The done. funniest thing you could possibly do in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh... The Temptation must have been great. Uh, <laughs> for those who don't know, um, all of the plastic models are made in uh, the UK for Games Workshop. So um, they're not coming on a boat from China. They are actually coming straight from uh, England, I believe, is where their factory's at. Um, and then they get shipped over to the US for, you know, uh, basically partitioning out to the stores and all that. So uh, it's, it's kind of a... Good thing and a bad thing because their production facilities are a little bit more limited because it's not a huge, huge thing right. as uh, you would expect in like a more uh, industrial, like complex area kind of thing. Um, but it does allow for a consistent release, if not, you know, somewhat limited. Right. right. Yeah. Griffin's yeah. Talking about. I also like Griffins. Yeah. I, I recently bought all the uh, Griff chargers they had at Gigabytes and the other free guild general. <laughs> I just want to run an all Griffin army because yeah. I like to lose creatively. Yeah, it's my goal. Well, who knows? Maybe we'll get more Griffins at some point. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, like Stormcast Griffins or Luminath Griffins. Just, just make Stormcast good again. Just that's it. But not as good as Luminath. I don't. I don't want to take that bullet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let Luminath be the yeah. one that everyone just thinks is really good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I think that basically wraps it up uh, for us. Uh, basically, keep an eye on our Facebook page for updates about events and our policies as they, uh, well, as we are moving forward. Uh, hopefully, towards the end of this pandemic, uh, we'll be updating y'all. Um, please check out the new Age of Sigmar League that Zach is so lovingly running for us, and then uh, check out our, our website, Gigabytes Online, for pre-orders or you know just browse what the store has to offer. Every day, we're uploading more and more products that we have in store available for you to pick up uh, today. Yeah, so, yeah. And we still do curbside delivery. Yep. If you're not comfortable coming in the store, uh, you can have somebody bring out and just sling it into your trunk. Absolutely. Carefully, yeah. carefully sling it into your trunk. We gently place it. Gently hurl it into the trunk. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I throw, I throw very softly, so, you know, I was never great <laughs> at baseball. Yeah, I'm more of an underhand pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll just kind of glide into the trunk. <laughs> Unlucky if it even gets there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, uh, and if anyone has any comments, questions, concerns, anything, please let us know. Uh, we're always open to feedback. Um, we love to hear from y'all, the community. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Stay safe, everybody. Oh, yeah, swap meet is oh. tomorrow. Be here bright and early. Uh, I believe the doors open at 10 a.m. Um, I'm not sure uh, if we have more spots available, but if you're looking to reserve a table, please go to our website to do so. All right. No. Okay. Now I'm done. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Bye, everyone.